marriage. How do you know if someone is ready for marriage? Marriage is probably the biggest thing anyone can do in their life. And this is a huge endeavor in their life because now their lives are different. They're with another person. They don't live in their own world. They don't live by themselves. But how do you know someone is ready for marriage? In my dating coaching, oftentimes I hear a lot of misconceptions. Oftentimes they question themselves or they ask themselves if they're ready for marriage according to, are they old enough? Do they get an education? Do they have a job? Are they able to support a family? And these are all relevant, relevant and important. However, when it comes to being ready for marriage, it is all about midot. It is all about character. Is the person willing to extend themselves to the point that they're living almost through the prism and the eyes of another person, willing to extend themselves, willing to embrace the other person's needs, wants, preferences, and really get out of their cocoon of their own lives and try to create a marriage where it's not based on one person, and a, but it is based on two. And it's really based on the other person, constantly thinking about the other. Oftentimes in marriage, we are confused. But I am in the marriage. How how much do I extend myself? I don't want to be taken advantage of, or I'm also important. There's two people, you know, there's there's two people involved. We both need to be involved in the marriage. And this is true. However, we learn from Parsha Mishpatim that there's an incredible insight on knowing if one is really ready for marriage. We have to understand that is that it is definitely easier to get married than it is to stay married. It is much harder to maintain the marriage because marriage is hard work. It's constant work. It's constant tailoring. It's constant weeding. It's constant taking care of that fertile soil, constantly taking care of it, making sure the atmosphere is correct, making sure we're getting the nutrients. Are we spending time together enough? Are we learning together? Are we giving to one another? This is marriage and this is hard work. And unfortunately, when couples, couples uh, unfortunately separate, when, they, when, when, when we hear of separations, it is based on not matters that are really so relevant in the way that it's not because of um, great circumstances such as, you know, God forbid, abuse in the marriage or alcoholism or you know, different factors that really show that, you know, this marriage is not going to work. Although there are reasons why couples should get divorced, that a rab should be consulted, a rabbi, so a mentor, a coach, someone who can really advocate uh, and of the situation and really understand the situation and give clarity to the situation. You know, most of the times people don't get divorced for these reasons. It's just because we are living, unfortunately, in our own selfish realms what that person didn't do for me. Um, and we want to make sure that we live in a trusting relationship where we're all in. It says in Parshat Shemot, if he shall arrive by himself, he shall leave by himself. If he is the, the husband of a woman, his wife shall leave with him. End quote. At the very beginning of Parsha Mishpatim, we learn that when a Jewish slave enters his slavery as a single man, that he must leave as a single man as well. Even if his master married him off to a, a Canaanite maidservant while he was a slave, he must leave, leave her when he goes free. In Mishneic Hebrew, the term for a single man is described as the word ravak. The, the Torah states, Im bekapo yavo begabo yeitze, which translates to alone, not married, he enters the slavery, then alone he leaves. What does the word bekapo really mean? 
The most common understanding is that this world is associated with the term begufo, with his body. The Torah is teaching that if, that if a person, if a man, comes with just his own body, he leaves with his own body. However, Rashi equates begapo with bignafo, with his garments. If he comes with his shirt on his back, he leaves with the shirt on his back. So what is this really teaching us? It's teaching, this is teaching us that if a person is really ready for marriage, a single person's world ends at the hem of his garment. He thinks only about himself. He thinks only about his possessions. His world ends where he ends. A married person is one whose cloak extends over someone else as well. There's a custom, Jews from, from German descent are called Yekis and Sephardim, that the chassan, the groom, extends his prayer shawl, shawl, his talit, over himself and his bride on the day of his wedding, over his kala. And this is teaching us that at the moment of his marriage, the chassan, the, the groom, demonstrates that his world is now going to extend beyond himself. His garment must now also cover someone else. My talis, he's saying, my talis used to cover only me, but now it covers my wife as well. This is perhaps the most crucial and difficult adjustment to married life. Singlehood comes with the freedom to climb into your own cocoon, to do whatever we want, and not have to think constantly about the other person. It is only through extending one's world beyond himself that a person can rise to a higher plane of existence and become complete. The only way we become complete people is through marriage. When a person gets married and now thinks in a different way, thinks through the prism of, wow, how can I satisfy the other person? How can I make sure my, my spouse is happy? How can I give to my spouse? That is being a complete person. A complete person is one who extends themselves to the other, namely their spouse. So what is the formula to know if one is ready for marriage? The answer is that if the person is willing to extend themselves and begin the journey of including someone in their own world. By including, it doesn't mean that what, what I understand about the other person has to, has to be understood or has to make sense. It means that strongly considering the feelings, preferences, likes, wants, dislikes, and needs of the other person. It is, it is really important that we internalize the idea of giving because when I give, I love. When I give, I love. It doesn't mean that I necessarily have to understand what I'm giving and why I'm giving it. You know, a, a wife may never understand why a husband has to, when he comes home from a day of work, he has to lounge on the couch and relax. Well, she can run three more shifts until she finally decides to rest. It doesn't make sense. We are wired differently. Nobody's better. We're different. We're two partners in a marriage that we can only become successful when we give it our all without keeping tabs, without keeping score. And that is a successful marriage. That is a marriage that's going to not only succeed, but it's going to be a happy marriage. There are many marriages out there. And just because a person is married doesn't mean they're happily married. And it doesn't mean that it's a complete marriage. We are married anyway. We are in the marriage anyway. Why not give it our all? And those of us listening who are not married, look for the right reason to get married. You want to get married, not just to be a complete person. You want to be, get married in order to give to the other person, in order to be that the right partner, the right husband, the right wife. This video is geared to the ladies, as all my videos, but what is a complete spouse? A spouse that gives, extends themselves to the other person. I always talk about in my coaching classes, in my, cl in my lectures, the way you know if that person is the right one for you is try to access ways or, or experience how they, their character is. How do they act? How does the person act before we get married? Try to, you know, try to see them different types of day, different types of times throughout the day. You know, one day it could be in the afternoon, one day it could be in the evening and doing different activities together, seeing their reactions to different things. 
And this is one of the tips that we know. How is the person going to react to me or to this experience or to the circumstance? What are their midot? What is their character trait? Marriage is not a relationship of equals. Marriage is successful when each spouse is focusing on how much they can contribute emotionally, physically, spiritually, in order to enhance the marriage to a successful one the best way that they can. Before I leave you my practical tip, I want to share with you a small story about how an elderly couple married 60 years or more. You know, they were they were having a celebration and they were asked, how was it you were able to have Shalom Bayit, peace in your home and married for so long? And they seemed like a very happily married couple. And through the conversation, their grandchildren found out that it was because they were sacrificing towards one another. They were giving to each other what they thought the other one needed. So even though um, even though the grandma loved white meat of the chicken and the grandma liked dark meat of the piece of chicken, they would save the part that they liked to their spouse, even though they liked it, because they thought their spouse also liked the same part of the chicken. And the grandchildren in the end said, well, you must have lost out in your marriage because you sacrificed one of these things. You know, this is one aspect of your marriage where you sacrificed, you probably sacrificed a lot of other things. And you lost out. You lost out on your marriage. All that time was wasted because you were mistaken on what the other one wanted. And they corrected their grandchildren. They said, no, we are both winners because we sacrificed for Shalom Bayit. We were happy to give. We were happy to do for the other without an expectation. And that is a complete marriage. Doing for the other without keeping tabs, without holding grudges, without having resentment. I'm going to leave you with a practical tip to, to affirm to yourself that we affirm to ourselves successfully as much as we can. I will stretch myself as much as I can to give all my efforts into my marriage without keeping score. Remember, marriage is not a business relationship. It's not I come home, you leave, you come home, I leave. That's living in a hotel. That's living in a business relationship. We want to live in a marriage where we are creating it in our home, not in a hotel, where we give without expectation, love giving, and remember not to have it make sense to us. We just need to give unconditionally, love each other, and in this way we will live in a complete marriage. And in this way we know we are married to the right people. Appreciating the insights of Rabbi Fran on the Parsha, in his book, Rabbi Fran on the Parsha 3, Leah Abramov being and becoming, awakening awareness of your greatness and potential.